Hello music fans, welcome back to the channel. This is actually my fourth attempt to make this video. I keep getting interrupted either with a phone call or someone was at the door or I dropped something and let's hope this is the actual take. I still don't do any editing so it's kind of like a one try and you're done kind of thing. So anyway, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is my 20th in the series of music collections videos so it's kind of a milestone for me and I wanted to do something kind of special uh, to celebrate 20 of these uh, music collections video because it does take a lot of research and it does take some time to put these things together so I hope you appreciate them I know they're a bit long but um, anyway I've had a lot of fun doing them and I'm gonna continue to do them and this is number 20 so what I wanted to do today is talk about Howard Jones Howard Jones is a a wonderful musician classically trained pianist and um, really a synthesizer pioneer who came out in 1983 uh, with this debut album, Humans Live, and it's just one of the best debut albums of all time. Uh, I fell in love with this album straight away. Um, it was just came out of nowhere, really, and uh, just just completely took me off guard because I'd never heard anything quite like it. And while it does seem maybe just a little bit dated, it was perfect for the 80s, and the songs, in my opinion, really, really still hold up very well. And if you take nothing out of this, I'm, I'm going to show you my entire collection. I'm very happy to do it because I've been a fan since the very beginning. Uh, but I, I'm hoping that you stick to this, stick through the video because I'm going to show you some of the stuff that he's done in the last, I'd say, 10 years that is really worth your time and really worth checking out, as well as all this older, older material that most of you probably know if you're watching this video or a fan of Howard Jones. Uh, but this is just chock full of hits, um, and when I saw him open up for Eurythmics at Red Rocks in Colorado, uh, it was mind-blowing, because his performance, he was a one-man band, he had a wall of synthesizers around him, he had a mime, like a performance artist mime that was doing impressions of different costumes and really different type of dancing and whatnot uh, throughout the entire show, pretty much, and it was just weird and bizarre and crazy and it was like who is this guy and um, really almost as much as, much as I love your rhythmics uh, almost stole the show uh, so I walked out of that concert thinking wow who I really really like this guy and I became a lifelong fan ever since then and I've seen him I think probably close to a dozen times he's still very actively touring still making music and um, this is one of the first CDs I ever bought actually the original back in, you know, when CDs first came out of Humans Live, I, you know, was one of the first ones I, I needed to have. Um, there's a lot of singles from that album. I, unfortunately, I thought I had more, but I don't have that many. I only have one, and that is his first single, New Song, and as you can see, it is signed by Howard Jones, so that's kind of cool. Uh, this is an original, uh, older signature, too. I've got a lot of stuff signed from him because he's very generous about uh, hanging around after concerts, meeting his fans, shaking hands, uh, signing whatever you put in front of him. He's always been very, very generous about that. And um, this is signed a long, long time ago from Howard Jones, and I'm really, really happy to have this, but still, uh, his first 12-inch single, a new song. I wish I had more, because I know there's more singles from that album, but that's all I have. Um, he, uh, <laughs> I've kept this all these years. I've had this forever. Look at this tank. Look at this case. It's an old VHS tape of a concert performance, Like to Get to Know You Well, it's called, and it just features a lot of his early hits. And as you can see, that's kind of what I'm talking about with Howard and his uh, mime slash dancer, whatever you want to call him, performance artist, I guess, is probably what he'd want to go by. Um, but it's just a good keepsake. I don't even have a playing VHS tape player anymore, but it's just fun to keep. Um, he also released about, well, maybe a year after that album did so well, that was a UK number one album, by the way, for a debut album. That's amazing. And um, he did this 12-inch uh, album, a bunch of remix on, remixes on this one. And this single here, Like to Get to Know You Well, is actually on his next album. But this was here on a remix album. This was never really officially released in the U.S., um, but it's not that hard to find. You guys can find that now. There's tons of imports of, of that. Um, Let's see. I was highly, highly anticipating his next album. I was one. Of, I was in high school, you know, young, about year ten when that first album came out, and it seemed like it took forever to get the follow up, but it really wasn't. It was only a year, and that is Dream into Action. But I was such a big fan. I had most of my room 
at the time my bedroom devoted to Howard Jones. I was a big, big fan, and still am. Uh, maybe not as obsessive as I was then as a kid, uh, but this album was so highly anticipated by me, and it didn't disappoint. It's really, really good. Again, it was produced by Rupert Hine, who did the first album. Rupert is maybe more famous for his work with The Fix, and they do have a bit of a similar sound. If you like The Fix, you probably would like Howard Jones. And it was also recorded and engineered by a guy named Stephen W. Taylor, both of these albums, uh, who works with uh, Rupert Hine in various projects and still working today with Kate Bush. And he did work with her on her most uh, recent uh, comeback tour in the UK when she did all those special shows. So he's still doing a lot of visuals and still very active. So this did not disappoint. Things Can Only Get Better was a big hit. Um, and I'm going to talk about another hit here, but I want to save it for the next piece I'm going to show you. Uh, but Life in One Day was another big single. And uh, the biggest single, uh, Things Can Only Get Better, and this single from this version. Um, there is an album version of No One Is To Blame on this one, produced by Rupert Hine. And then Phil Collins got a hold of the song. I don't know who commissioned that, if he was asked to do it, or if they just became friendly or what, but Phil Collins produced a different version of No One Is To Blame, and it rocketed to the top of the charts much, much better. And um, that was probably his biggest U.S. single ever. No one is to blame. Just a wonderful song. I'll put a link in, in the video to, to that song because it is, not that you probably haven't heard it, but it, if you're new to my uh, to Howard Jones, you definitely want to check that out. Uh, that was really the peak of his career. You know, from there, it just kind of slowly uh, dwindled off. But he was really big at the time. He was filling big stadiums, like I said, Red Rocks and uh, big arenas. And um, he did Live Aid, and he was very, very highly thought of and big time. And this kind of is the the capturing of all of that, this VHS tape again, uh, Last World Dream. Very dramatic, you know, as he says in the video, it's very dramatic to say it's the last time he'll ever perform these songs, which he's still doing today. Um, but, you know, this, this kind of, it was the pinnacle. This was the height of his career. So, just fun to hang on to that through all these years. Um, he did a few more albums with uh, Warner Brother, Electra, and uh, the next album to come out was uh, a bit of a change of pace for Howard. It was called One to One, and it did have... Uh, he, he was always found a way to be, at the time, he had some big singles, and this again had uh, some big singles on it. You Know I Love You, Don't You, All I Want, and A um, Little Bit of Snow were the singles on this one. But he did break away from the sound of Rupert Hind on those first two albums, and this is produced by Arif Martin, or Arif Martin, uh, who's worked with every anybody who who's anybody, basically, and uh, one of the greatest producers of all time. Uh, it's a very solid album, and um, while it was a little bit of a commercial disappointment, I think, in comparison to the first two, it still sold very well, and, um, you know, it's still a favorite of mine, so One to One was the follow-up to that. And then he did two more albums. Got a little ahead of myself here, but I, you know, there has subsequently been reissues of not on vinyl, but on CD. There's uh, deluxe remastered editions of Humans Live. You can see they changed the uh, color, made it a color picture on on the little slip case there. There was a um, re remastered uh, Dream into Action. Not a lot of change on the cover on that one, but they just cleaned it up and make it sounds amazing. And then there is this um, box set of the 12-inch album and action replay that was re redone and remastered. So it's nice to have those in nice, updated, um, great-sounding quality. There's a CD of one-to-one, -one, so that catches us up a little bit. And then a couple more albums he did for Warner Electra. The next one was uh, Cross That Line. This one's in shrink with the hype sticker still on it, which is neat. Uh, again, singles. He had a big single on this one called Everlasting Love. And this album was released in 1989, so this is the last of his 80s albums. Um, and, it, again, you know, his audience was just kind of slowly, slowly fading away a little bit. And that's unfortunate, because this is a really good album. It has good songs on it called uh, The Prisoner and uh, Powerhouse and Cross That Line. And he does an instrumental on here called Out of Thin Air that is beautiful, beautiful piano work. He is a classically trained pianist, by the way. 
uh, Guardians of the Breath is a wonderful, wonderful song. Uh, so it's a shame that this album didn't do a little bit better because it's a really overlooked a gem in his uh, early career. And then one more album for Warner. Uh, here's the CD version of Cross That Line. Uh, not much to show you there. Uh, one more album that was never released on vinyl, to my knowledge, and that is called In the Running. This was his final album for Warner Brothers, Electra. And um, this was uh, a bit of a change for, for Howard. Again, he had, had a good single off of this, and that is called um, Lift Me Up. The, that was a pretty darn big hit, you know, another top 20 hit for him. The album didn't sell very well, and unfortunately, Warner dropped him. So that was the last of his Warner Brother output for Howard Jones. But, you know, things happen for a reason. And um, I think really, honestly, from that moment, he became more of an independent artist, did exactly what he wanted, didn't worry about churning out hits, had more variety in his work, and now we're going to talk about some cool stuff that maybe you've never seen. Uh, I do have one CD single from The Prisoner that was on Cross That Line. I forgot to show you that. And I don't have any CD singles from In the Running. There probably are out there, so as much as a completist I am, I'm still missing a few things. Um, toured extensively still. <coughs> and the first independent release he did uh, was called A Live Acoustic America. This was just, again, hits. Uh, didn't really have any new songs on here. Uh, but this was his first attempt, uh, now he's done many, of taking away all those walls and layers of synthesizer and just stripping the songs down to acoustic versions. And they really, really work. And it shows how good of a songwriter he is. It's not just bells and whistles and electronics and gadgetry. He really is a good songwriter and a great player. And it really comes out in this version here, uh, in these versions uh, of his songs, Live Acoustic America. So this one's probably not too easy to find. Could be wrong. Uh, but um, certainly, definitely worth picking up. And then he uh, took forever <laughs> to release his next studio album. This is, uh, you know, he, he never really officially released this. When he did it, he said, you know, this is the way it was, and, and you know, these may or may not come back in different forms, but um, it was kind of raw and rough at the time. It's called Working in the Back Room, but I really like it. Uh, it's got some cool songs on it called Cooking in the Kitchen. Over and Above is really, really catchy. It's one of those toe-tapper songs. Um, uh, you know, I'm a fan, so, you know, he could probably do anything, and I'm going to be excited and, and be happy to listen to it, but again, it's that positive message and that uplifting sound of Howard Jones. When he sings, he, he just sounds happy. He just sounds like he's enjoying it, and it really comes out in his live performance. I've never seen a live performer who looks like he enjoys it more than Howard Jones. He is into it. He interacts with his audience. He talks. He tells stories. He uh, it meets people after every concert, and he's just so personable. In fact, his mom, for many, many years, he recently lost his mom, uh, but for years and years, she ran the merchandising booth on all the shows. So he was just really a great guy, is a great guy, and um, family man. And I just just can't say enough good things about Howard Jones. This is kind of an accumulation of all the early stuff, all of the uh, Warner Brother years, all of the Electra years in America. And I'm so happy to have this signed by him. You know, that means a great deal to me, because I, I probably saw him in the early years, pro every tour from 83 all the way through every album, everything he ever did, I always wanted to be there, and I may managed to make it to every show. I think I've seen him at least a dozen times. And this is just an accumulation of all the uh, singles and all the B-sides and unreleased stuff and the very best of Howard Jones. So if you can find this, this is just a great entry point to his career. And again, that signature means a great deal to me. Okay, so from there, we're going to get into some stuff now that's been released on his independent label, Detox. And um, he has his own label and releases stuff periodically through that, not only for himself but for other artists. And the first release on Detox, to my knowledge, now, you know, I'm not an expert. I don't go and do a lot of research. I'm just going off the top of my head. But I believe this was the first release on Detox. This is called Angels and Lovers. It was just a four-track EP, and it was the predecessor to his next album to come out, and um, really, really cool to have that. So um, I'm just excited to hang on to these things all these years. This came out in 1997, so you can kind of get a time frame thing here. But it was a predecessor to this album, which is wonderful. 
Uh, I can't say enough good things about people. So now we're going into his later 90s stuff. And people probably people probably haven't paid much attention to Howard since the 80s and maybe early 90s. But this is an album that you need to hear. If you liked his 80s stuff, there's no reason you're not going to like this. Because this has a little bit of everything. It has the electronics, has the acoustic, has the uh, adult-oriented radio stuff. This is just a really good album. 13 tracks and uh, Let the People Have Their Say is a wonderful song. If you haven't heard it, just find that on YouTube. It should have been a number one hit, and so should have this. Tomorrow is Now. Uh, this was a single, and, um, you know, I don't know where he lands on the charts, and frankly, I don't care, and I don't think he cares that much. Um, I think he's just really, really happy to still be doing his thing, still be putting out music. He has a very loyal, loyal fan base. And to this day, even though he hasn't had a hit in probably close to 30 years, people still fill up his concert halls to go see Howard Jones. And I can vouch for it because year after year, he still comes here even to Texas, of all places, and can still sell out a reasonably good-sized crowd uh, because people have stuck with Howard Jones through the years, like myself, and appreciate this, this stuff that he does. Uh, here's a single for Let the People Have Their Say. Uh, wonderful song. I'll, I'll try to find a link for that one. Just, just, just a different version of that one. This has actually three, three tracks on it. Uh, everything and two different versions of Let the People Have they, Their Say. As I said earlier, Howard Jones is a classically trained musician. And he is a wonderful pianist and composer. And not just a pop star. And he did two albums uh, that I find beautiful. And, and especially important in his entire catalog and that are these piano solo albums. These are just as they sound, just piano solo pieces that he composed. First one here, um, you know, they're, they're for people who are important in his life, for, for Steg, who was an artist who did the artwork on the debut album. Uh, his name is Steg. Um, he did the artwork for um, Humans Lib. I think they're still great friends today. Uh, Jan, he did a song for Jan, his wife, of many, many years. Um, songs for his children. Um, you know, it, it just a very personal, very personal album. And then he did another one a few years later, uh, Piano Solos Number 2. And, and Howard, if you happen to be watching, I love these, and I hope you do another one, because I put these on a lot, and they're just so peaceful and so wonderful to listen to. Um, he still does uh, get, get into the pop scene a little bit, too, and, and I wouldn't say recently. This came out in 2000... Uh, if I can read it here. 2005? Yeah, 2005 did this uh, single uh, called Slip Away uh, with Mojito. I don't know who that is, really, frankly, but I bought it just because it said featuring Howard Jones on it. And it, they just use um, bits and pieces of things can only get better on, on a dance single, so it's kind of cool that people still sample his music, so that's neat. Um, I've got a lot of different uh, tour albums and greatest hits compilations that I can get through pretty quick here. Uh, this is a, 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 a CD called The Peaceful Tour. Uh, just again, you know, just going through his catalog. Wonderful live performer, as I said, so um, just got all the hits on it in different live versions so this is called the peaceful tour um, not sure I'm gonna be able to read the year on this one it looks like it may be 2007 on that one okay so here we've got two different versions of more live material uh, preform which is a pretty cool cover I think I really like that and you know every tour he seems to try to do something different whether it's all acoustic or he'll have a guitar and uh, and some sort of a uh, percussion session um, or he'll do a full electronic shows where he'll he'll really go back to doing his elect you know his synthesizer wizardry um, it's just always something different you never know what you're gonna get with Howard in fact he's coming here not that long from now again and I hear it's going to be a completely solo acoustic thing so I can't wait for that here in Texas so that one's that was uh, a, a really cool pickup there here is a uh, uh, again, just a, a whole bunch of uh, different versions of classic songs that we've known for a long, long time. It's a two-CD set, but these are remade versions of them and re-recorded and um, just really updated them. You know, so he took those classic songs from the 80s and early 90s and kind of updated them, so that's kind of cool. 
as I said, you know, he's always doing something different live. So this is a live CD that he did with piano and, and uh, guitar accompaniment. And this is completely different, again, to anything else that he's done live. Uh, this guitarist is Robin Bout, Bolt. I, I'm not sure how to say his name. Uh, but I believe he's still working with uh, Robin t today. So, um, you know, they... I'm sure, because he's such a wonderful guy, people um, stick with Howard just like his fans do, his his uh, support team. All right, so uh, let's see if I can figure out what year this came out. Probably not. Looks like maybe 2008, 2009, something like that. I really wish my eyes were better. Um, but he did an album called Revolution of the Heart, and this is an Australian copy, two CD set. And... Um, this was a return to his electronic stuff. This is real dancey. This is real updated um, electronic beats and um, almost blew me away because it sounds so fresh and so current that, you know, if you haven't heard his recent stuff, this would be a great pickup. This would be a great one to find. There's a couple different versions. There's this, this one. There's a simple one CD. This is a two CD set, Australian tour edition, I think it was. And uh, let's see, uh, yeah, here's a second CD there. This is uh, some sort of a deluxe edition of Revolution of the Heart that I ordered from his website, and, well, he was gracious enough to sign it, I think, for the first 500 people or something like that. Uh, this is number 350. So really, really great to have it. Um, and this was a real return to um, electronic music, like his first two albums. Or, well, uh, you know, more than that, but his first early part of his career. You know, it was a return to dance music and to electronics and full-on um, synthesizer. Uh, so here's a single from that. Uh, Just Look At You Now. Wonderful song. I'll try to find a link for that. And then for diehard fans like me, <laughs> he did a uh, remixed and surrounded version of that album. This is in surround sound 5.1. It just sounds amazing. It really, really does. There's another signed, signed piece from Howard. Uh, as I said, you know, just catch him after a show, and he'll sign anything. Um, well, if it's his. Yeah, just uh, 5.1 surround sound remixes, and a lot of visuals accompany this, and you can pop it in your computer, and it does all kinds of crazy stuff. So, really, really cool. And um, I'm so glad that he's still working and doing things, because he, he, I think he's one of those artists that doesn't want to just be... Uh, stuck in the 80s, although his live show, of course, you know, he does stick to the hits pretty much, but he'll always throw in something new, and uh, people will always remember Howard Jones for the 80s. Um, he'll never break out of that mold, and I don't think he minds, um, because that was the peak of his career, but um, two more albums to show you. I've got uh, an album that came out in, well, I'm not even going to bother, well, I guess I should try to figure it out. <laughs> I'm so bad with reading stuff here. Um, if I can get it out, it's not cooperating. Um, well, anyway, it's Ordinary Heroes. This uh, I, I'm not as familiar with this. I've had it since it came out, but, you know, it didn't seem to strike a, a chord with me when it came out, and I'm having a heck of a time figuring out how to open it. It's got some sort of trickery here to it. Um, there's a booklet. <laughs> Finally got the booklet out. It, it, and I, I would say this is maybe one of his weaker efforts, in my opinion. Um, not that it's bad, I don't think he's ever released anything bad, um, but the next album, his most recent album, I, I believe is much better. Uh, this came out, oh gosh, I don't know why people want to hide the years. It, there's nowhere on here where it says the year this was released. Uh, maybe here. Um, it's just amazing. All this information, and nowhere does it say year. Well, anyway, it's not that old. I think it was 2010 or 2011. And um, this, again, was on his own label, Detox Records. And uh, yeah, it's definitely good. I mean, it's a good album. But this new one, he's got a new album out. And there's a few different versions of it. There's deluxe editions and just a CD if you want to get the CD, or you can just download it. Uh, but this is called Engage. There's a special deluxe version that he's hand-done with a beautiful acrylic book and it's really really expensive though so I d did not buy that but um, I'm just more for the music but this is all just as the title suggests um, it it's meant to be music that you can do things with 
uh, engaging the crowd, and he asks people when he comes to his shows at some of his tour stops to do certain things or wear certain pieces of clothing or on certain songs do certain things. Um, so, again, it's signed. This is a CD DVD edition, um, so it just sounds so fresh and so original and so current that um, it's just amazing. Uh, it is dated 2014, but I haven't had it that long, so I think it just really almost just came out. Um, so you can go to his website. I will leave a link to his website where you can purchase some of this music because I don't know where else to find it. Maybe Amazon. Um, but this is definitely worth getting. Again, it's on his Detox record label. And, uh, you know, I know that he pours a lot of heart and soul into his music still. And I would really encourage you to check out the new album, Engage, if you've ever liked Howard Jones through the years. Well, uh, a couple other things to show you real quick, and I'll let you go. I've got a DVD of the 20th anniversary concert that he did at uh, Shepherd's Bush um, in the UK. This was uh, 20th anniversary of releasing his first single. And then he did the same thing again at 25 years. This one was done at, uh, at the Indigo, the O2, in uh, the UK. So you can see he still does sell out pretty big arenas. And this is a two-DVD uh, set, and it really covers his entire career. This is really nice. Um, and there's just different segments, and it's really cool because he does, like, retro segments and current stuff and acoustic, and it really covers all the different facets of how he performs live. And then uh, this one here was done earlier than that. Uh, this is live in Salt Lake City. He's really big in Salt Lake City, by the way. I'm not sure why. Colorado, uh, Utah that part of the U.S. he seems to be really big and yeah he still still does well I mean he's got a very loyal following and I'm one of his biggest fans so Howard keep going never retire keep making great music and thank you all for watching enjoying Howard Jones with me and uh, I hope to see you soon and uh, until next time take care and thanks uh, for watching my videos this is number 20 again in my music collections videos and um, I really enjoy making them for you guys so thank you so much for your support and we will see you all real soon bye for now